Ricardo Ando was born in Minato-ku, Osaka, Japan. He worked as a truck driver and boxer before settling on the profession of architecture, desperate never having taken formal training in the field. He was struck by the Franco Drive designed in period hotel on a trip to Tokyo as a second year high school student. He eventually decided to end his boxing career of less than two years after graduating from high school and to pursue architecture. He attended night classes to learn drawing and took correspondence courses on interior design. He visited buildings designed by renowned architects like Le Corbusier, Nies van der Rohe, Frank Lloyd Wright and Louise Kahn before returning to Osaka in 1968. In the small town of Ibaraki, 25 kilometers outside of Osaka, Japan, stands one of Tado Ando's signature architectural works, the Church of Light. Osaka is a city in the Cantonese region of the Japan's island Honshu, the capital city of Osaka, and also the largest part of the Cantonese metropolis, which comprises three major cities of Japan, Kyoto, Osaka, and Kobe. The crucifix-shaped opening in the side of the building is the main light source for the interior of the chapel. Access to the church is intentionally indirect. Worshippers are required to enter the site at the northeast corner of a side street via forecourt, which leads around a corner of the church to the minister's house. The entrance path to the chapel is manipulated by an intersecting wall that forces the visitor to take a step to the left before entering the main space. From here, the route turns and skips forward in a convoluted S movement that takes the visitor through an opening in the long wall of the church and leads on to a second high doorway in the angled blade wall. The visitor pivots around the diagonally slicing wall and is perfectly aligned with the crucifix of light at the opposite end of the room. One is rewarded once entered by seeing the unexpected impact of the cross of light filling the surrounding darkness at the opposite end of the church. Once inside, the eye takes time to adjust to the gloom. Besides the cross punched out of the front of the wall, a second full height glazed opening is provided towards the rear with a diagonal blade of concrete slices through the side of the building. This helps to soften the contrast between the brilliant light of the cross and the darkened interior. The cross opening in the end of the wall is the principal daylight source. Light is reflected off the ceiling and walls by glass-like concrete, which helps distribute the light more evenly. The wall that obstructs the visitor's entrance path is a diagonal wall that cuts across the rectangular building at a 15 degree angle. This wall never touches the main building. This was built around 20 years ago when we knew from the beginning we only had a small budget. But the people who come to this church are very devoted. I was asked to create a place where people can put their hearts together. You can see light come through from the outside and I made this cross of light in the hopes that people's souls and minds can be united by the light through the cross. These chairs and floors are made of scaffold boards, materials used in the construction site. Such materials could turn out to be very attractive depending on the way you use them. The wall of concrete was kept the way it was when it was finished, and as the light comes in, it originally changes its expression. I wanted to build architecture with a low budget, 
but rich in character. As you can see, the light comes through here, straight. I believe architecture is fundamentally a public space, where people can gather and communicate, think about the history, think about the human being or the world. I believe architecture can create a space like that. All architecture has a public nature. I believe, so I would like to make a public space. This is a place where you can use five senses to think. For example, you can sense by seeing people in the light. You can sense by hearing the sound and the echo. You can feel the atmosphere. The best time to see this place is when people are here singing hymns. The Abbey at Sinenque in province was an inspiration source for Ander, which he visited in the 1960s. The Abbey Church is in the form of a tau cross with an apse projecting beyond the Abbey's outer walls, which was also a key point that he worked on through his process while working on the Church of Light. The mixture of Eastern and Western motifs is fairly typical. Ando often deploys Oriental Japanese types with contravailing Western paradigms. It arises this form his goal of fusing opposite spatial concepts into fluid transcendental architecture. This is also about the integration of two opposites, abstraction and representation. Moreover, Andrew himself is a twin, which might help to explain his fascination with pairs, pairs of ideas. The Abbey is a remarkably untouched survival of rare beauty and serenity. The capitals of the paired columns in the cloister, arcades, are reduced in the simplest leaf forms, not to offer sensual distraction. Onda believes the speed of change makes you wonder what will become of the architecture. In the West, there has always been the attempt to try and make the religious building, whether it is at a medieval or a Renaissance church, an eternal object for the celebration of God. The material chosen, such as stone, brick or concrete, is meant to eternally preserve what is inside. Ondo expresses that in all of his works, light is an important controlling factor. The church shows a great contrast between solid, void, light, dark, stark, serene, which makes an architecture of duality. The result is a very peaceful, pure, solid space with no ornamentation, creating a very spiritual and earthly connection within themselves through being aware of how material and nature plays a big role. Ando brought in the challenge of bringing in nature inside. He wanted man and nature to confront each other within the enclosed internal world of his architecture. This involved creating a tension between the two, which is expressively resolved in the nothingness of the internal space. To achieve this, Ando conceived his buildings almost as land art, buried places that struggled to emerge from the earth which, by their struggle, dramatized the encounter between architecture and nature. <laughs>